Welcome to Upper Mesa Falls in Eastern Idaho, just outside of Yellowstone National Park and near Island Park in Eastern Idaho. One of the more scenic, attractive locations here in Eastern Idaho. Um, there's a really cool geologic story going on here too, um, which I'll try to explain. Thanks for joining me today, geology professor Sean Wilsey, uh, here in Eastern Idaho, checking out some rocks and some geology and sharing all that with you as best I can. So hope you're enjoying being along for the ride. So Upper Mesa Falls here is about a 115 foot drop, about 35 meters, uh, really spectacular. There's a little bit smaller drop just below me. And then a few miles downstream is Lower Mesa Falls, which is a little bit shorter, something like 60, 70 foot drop. Uh, but for my money, I've always found this to be the more attractive one. The really cool story here, <clears throat> aside from the scenery, is the geology. All the rock you can see across the way here, this is all um, Mesa Falls Tuff. This is all 1.3 million year old ash. It's ash that's been fused together into rock, a rock called Tuff. And this was from the second big eruption from Yellow, the Yellowstone region, again, 1.3 million years ago. Of the three most recent eruptions from Yellowstone, this was the smallest, but it still put out a tremendous amount of ash into uh, the atmosphere and during that volcanic eruption. So we actually have over 400 feet of welded ash from the base here where the river is all the way up to the top of the ridge. And most places you see the Mesa Falls Tough, you don't quite see it this thick. So let me try to explain as best I can with the diagram how all this came to be. Maybe I'll move away from the falls a bit so I'm not competing with it with the microphone. But if we look at my diagram here, what we have then is looking to the south, remember the Mesa Falls Tough erupted into a caldera that was already there. So the older um, caldera, the Island Park caldera, existed before the, the Henry's Fort caldera. And so there was a caldera rim that existed just to the south, which is pretty much about where we are. We're somewhere in this region here at Mesa Fall, Upper Mesa Falls. So as the ash, the big billowing clouds of ash collapsed, uh, downward, they produced pyroclastic flows, so avalanches of ash that were racing out towards the south. Now, some of that ash actually climbed up and over the caldera rim, which is, you know, in some places upwards of a thousand feet, 300 meters in height, up and over that caldera rim, and then raced down the flanks of the volcano. But here up against the caldera wall, there was a thick accumulation of ash that ponded up against the wall, so we had a much thicker deposit of ash. It was fused more densely due to the heat and the thickness of the ash. And so that's what actually forms the volcanic ash that we see right here at Upper Mesa Falls with this 400 foot thick ash layer here. So this explains a little bit why we see such a thick um, accumulation of ash here at Upper Mesa Falls is that it was uh, it was trapped against this caldera wall so we had a lot of this ash that was unable to escape and was trapped in the caldera floor uh, itself during that eruption again about 1.3 million years ago. The location of the river um, is at an interesting geologic location because we've got to the east of the river we've got basalt flows. We have these lava flows that are about 29,000 years old and you can see they look quite a bit different than the rhyolitic ash. It's more blocky, it forms a big talus slope here. It's got a lot more fractures in it and that's juxtaposed against the ash on this side, um, the tuff, which is um, much more cohesive, forms bigger cliffs and is what's actually forming the cliff band where the where the waterfall is here right now. And so we have the river, the Henry's Fork River, more or less following the contact between these lava flows here, just to the east, and the Mesa Falls Tuff, just to the west, and at 
the look at the falls there. So let me go to one more diagram here that'll hopefully help explain how or a little progression of how all that came to be. Another simple diagram I've drawn here. So if we have the Henry's Fork River flowing initially through a canyon that was entirely floored by Mesa Falls Tuff. So again, the 1.3 million year old tuff had erupted. Uh, and over time, we started to erode into that tuff, eventually forming the Henry's Fork River here. So we have this canyon we see here. But then about 29,000 years ago, and actually before that, because there's older uh, basalt flows that filled this canyon. But I'm just going to pick one just to simplify things. But if you can imagine this process playing out multiple times, I think you'll get the idea. So then if we have an eruption of basalt, that basaltic lava is going to go to the lowest point. And the lowest point, of course, is this canyon. That's where the river is. So instead of the river being in the canyon, the lava takes over uh, the river corridor. We, we fill or partially fill this canyon with basaltic lava. And now the river is forced to flow elsewhere. And we see this happening in many locations in the Snake River Plain and elsewhere. And because basalt is such a hard resistant rock, um, what usually happens is the river is forced to carve <coughs> excuse me, a new path along the edge of the basalt flow. So if we go to our final diagram here, what we see is the canyon still there. The basalt has been partly eroded because the river now occupies this other little section here. And so the river is cutting down uh, with basalt on one side and this older tuff here. So again, in this case here, Upper Mesa Falls, we've got 29,000 year old basalt flows and 1.3 million year old uh, rhyolitic tuffs. What's somewhat interesting here is I'm standing more or less right here uh, on top of or nearly on top of the basalt flows. And as I look across the river at higher topography, the rocks are actually older. So typically when you go to most places, um, the older rocks are lower and the younger rocks are higher. Um, but here it's been a little bit reversed unless you can really kind of decipher <coughs> the geologic history and what's going on here. So an interesting juxtaposition, these basalts right here on the uh, east side of the canyon, forming these sort of columns and terraces and the big talus zone here. And then as we swing around looking to the south down river, and then come around to our first outcrop sticking out of the forest. We've got the rhyolite, rhyolitic tuff, the Mesa Falls tuff, that's 1.3 million years old. And again, over here at the falls themselves. Um, so interesting geology and really a story that will likely play out in the future. We expect, you know, future eruptions in this area at some point, likely basaltic eruptions. Those basalt flows will come down into this canyon uh, dam up the river, disrupt it for a period of time, and ultimately uh, divert it. If those lava flows are coming in from the east, we would expect the Henry's Fork River to then shift to the west over time um, and possibly change the location of the falls as well. So just another quick shot there of Upper Mesa Falls. So get out of the way of the, the folks here, but Get one more look at these uh, basalt flows over here. Nice little kind of amphitheater uh, where the river's probably undercut a little section of this in the past and caused some undercutting. And then you can see all the rock fall here and the talus below. So this is the Pine Haven flow, about 29,000 years old. So hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for joining me again here at Upper Mesa Falls. Appreciate all the support you can provide. Uh, to help me produce more of these travel videos. Lots of options there under the video description, the thanks button, or the banner of, of my homepage here on YouTube. Thanks so much for joining me from Eastern Idaho and Upper Mesa Falls.